One thing that I never stop getting when I'm doing my videos, my driver videos mostly, is questions like which driver should I get for this card, which driver should I get from my, for my RX 580, which driver is the best for my RX 6600, for my 6700 XT, which driver is the best, the best for my 7800 XT, doesn't really matter, but people keep asking this question, which driver is the best for my GPU? So I came to the conclusion that I needed to make this video, which are my experiences basically mixed up in a bag and that I throw up to you in order for you to know which driver versions uh, are the best for your card or should be the best for your card because all experiences are slightly different, but overall these should be the best drivers for your card in 2023. Now before going to the actual data, you might be asking a question about me of course, which is why am I wearing a coat inside? <laughs> now, seriously, also that, but mostly, why do I have a black eye? Okay, I was not fighting, well, technically I was not fighting, was training kickboxing. And this is not because of heavy fighting, it is, it, it is mostly because of the, um, the, the bad habit that I, that I have of having my guard too close to, the, to these bones, you see, to here. Instead of having it upper or a bit down, uh, I tend to have it here, and when I and uh, when we are punching a bit harder, of course, each other's um, with protection, of course, with the gloves. Um, I tend to do this instead of letting this in this position. So this, I just do this. So when I when I get punched, I do this, and it's basically my glove that makes this happen. And it doesn't even hurt. It just really makes no absolute sense because it doesn't even hurt. It is just there and I look like a panda, but basically that's it. The reason why I never get on this side is because my guard is usually a bit lower on this side, uh, so it uh, punches the cheek or this, and it never happens here on the cheekbone, so yeah, basically that's it. And just because of that, I'm gonna leave you with today's sponsor. Today's video sponsor is GVG More, bringing you all the software deals you need, like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2021 with a new Windows 11 design, and even Windows Server 2022. For all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 25% off, getting a Windows 10 serial key for only $16. Then use the key on your Windows settings, and you'll have an activated system. Now going back to the topic, I actually need my glasses to read better. Uh, not that I need them 24/7, but I need them usually. Now the best drivers, the best 2023 20, drivers. Let's start with the older generation cards with the RX 500 or 400, basically Polaris cards and Vega cards. Now, the official support stopped with the 23.11.1 drivers, and AMD actually stated that the Polaris cards will get more drivers, and I repeat, will get more drivers, but only for critical updates. So if you have these cards, well, and you want better driver versions, you stick with the 23.11.1 officially, or you have the former Amer Nimet drivers, which are now Radian ID drivers, which are basically modded drivers that you can use in order to get the most uh, of your older GPUs, in this case even the RX 500, 400 or Vega cards, you can use the Radian ID drivers and you can still use, for example, the 23.12.1 drivers and you'll be able to keep using, let's say, the 24.1.1, 24.1.2, 24.7.1, Two, it doesn't really matter. Um, these guys actually are golden and they give support for the previous GPUs. For example, with these drivers, even without any kind of, uh, of doing outside of this, if you have an 8 gigabytes GPU with these drivers, for example, the RX 580, um, yeah, the RX 588 gigabytes or the Vega cards, you can use smart access memory even without the official support. So this is a thing that you can use. And for some users, if you're having issues with these cards and the most, uh, the most recent drivers, you can stick with the 23.5.2 because according to some users, these drivers were the best in terms of stability, the best in terms of stability, I have everything here, uh, the best in terms of stability according to some users and performance. But for me, according to my tests, the 23.11.1 are indeed the best ones. I wouldn't even bother going with a, with a modded driver so far, at least so far, 
uh, maybe in some months, maybe, but yet the 23.1, the 23.11.1 drivers are just fine for the Polaris and Vega cards. So just to conclude, Polaris and Vega, 23.11.1. If you have issues, go back to the 23.5.2 drivers. As for the RDNA 1 users, basically the RX 5000 series users, well, uh, I've tested recently the, the 40 games with the RX 5700 XT at 1080p. If you want to check it out, just check it. You have 40 games tested there, uh, basically trying to see if the 5700 XT was still capable enough of running 1080p in 2023, almost 2024. And I tested with the 23.11.1 drivers and they were basically, well, spotless. They were really, really good. I had no issues whatsoever. However, the overclocking functioned well, uh, it was stable, the performance of the card was actually pretty good for, for what it is. You can use the most recent 23.12.1, but I don't see any benefits of using that specific driver uh, with this card unless, and I repeat, unless you want to play, for example, Avatar. If you want to play Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, you'll get slightly more FPS with the 23.12.1 drivers, but if you want to play, let's say, Alan Wake, you'll get a bit more FPS with the 23.11.1. It is what it is. As for the RDNA 2 users, RX 6000 series, well, these are more interesting because we have lots of things to choose from. So, for example, we have the 23.11.1 drivers that, for me, are the best overall for these cards, the RX 6000 series once again. But some people do prefer the 23.9.2 drivers because of, well, reasons. At least for their systems it works better, but for me, the 23.11.1 drivers are the best. Now, you can use indeed the 23.12.1 drivers, which are the most recent, but I, once again I see no gains apart from Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, so the same goes for the RX 6000 series as it did for the 5700 XT or mostly the 5000 series. If you are playing Avatar Frontiers of Pandora right now, use the 23.12.1 drivers. If you're having issues with these drivers, as most people are having somehow in some games, go back to the 23.11.1 drivers. You won't have any more issues. Uh, you might have lower performance. You, you will definitely have lower performance with Avatar, but once again, Alan Wake 2 will perform better. And also you have, of course, the option of using the AF-MF drivers, basically the AMD Fluid Motion Frames. You can use the beta drivers, which now are equal to the 23.12.1 drivers, but present you the option of using, of, using, <laughs> of using Fluid Motion Frames in drivers. It is not like FSR 3 frame generation, it is far from that. It has way more input latency, it doesn't have access to the motion vector, so in terms of fluidity, in terms of... Uh, motion artifacts, it will still be worse than FSR 3 frame generation, but overall you can use it in almost every DX11, I believe now, and the X12 games, it, they will work just fine, you just have to go there, activate the fluid motion frames, and in most scenarios it will work fine if, you're, if you are, let's say, going over 60, 70 FPS, 75, depending on the resolution, you'll be fine and they'll work, okay? So that's also an option for the RDNA 2 users, but once again, for me, I would just go with the 23.11.1 drivers or the AFMF drivers if you really want to use the fluid motion frames. And I also just want to state that if you have issues with the high idle power, because some drivers recently, uh, most drivers actually fixed most of users' uh, users' problems with the high idle power in some multi multi <laughs> in some multi monitor setups or multi multi monitor multi multi-monitor setups, and some users told me they, they were having lower idle power draw uh, with the 23.8.2 and 23.9.2 drivers. So if you're having those issues, try these versions, but be aware that in some, in some games like Alan Wake, Assassin's Creed Mirage, uh, Avatar, you'll have lower performance. But it's a trade-off, I guess. And now going to the most recent cards, the RDNA 3 ones, the RX 7000 series. Once again, the best overall drivers are the 23.11.1 drivers. And you might say, well, but why not the 23.12.1 drivers? Because they bring hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. Well, I can tell you right away that at least on my 7900 XT and 7900 XTX, those cards perform very well in terms of gaming, 
and I repeat gaming with um, with the most recent drivers and with hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. But in terms of other things, let's say um, some editing with Wondershare Filmora, for example, and I know that the issue might be with the software and not um, and not with um, with the drivers themselves, but some people are also claiming that they are having lots of stutters in some in some Warhammer games and some other games. So I do believe that in some scenarios these drivers aren't really great. If you are having issues, go back to the 23.11.1 drivers as they are the best overall drivers. In terms of the best drivers for gaming performance, then we could say that the 23.12.1 drivers are it. They work very well with Avatar, they work fine with Alan Wake 2, they work very, very nicely with Assassin's Creed Mirage and some other games. It just works fine in terms of gaming. It is the other things that I that I found not working properly. But overall, without, with or without hacks, hardware accelerated GPU scheduling, these drivers are fine for gaming. And well, I almost forgot to tell you this, if you're using VR and emulation, then you definitely want to use the 23.12.1 drivers and make sure that you have activated the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling because it helps a lot VR performance with the 7000 series and it helps a lot once again the emulation performance in some scenarios with the 7000 series. Basically these these two, these two fields were where the where the 7000 series were performing worse, and it seems that hardware accelerated GPU scheduling really helps in those scenarios. And you also have the option of using the AFMF drivers, once again the fluid motion frames drivers, which are still on beta and are equal equal on the 7000 series, are equal to the 23.12.1 drivers, but allow you to use the fluid motion frames. So if you're into fluid motion frames for several reasons, it doesn't really matter, use these drivers. If you're, if you're having problems with the 23.12.1 drivers, use the 23.11.1, sorry, I'm getting mixed up. Best overall, 23.11.1, best for gaming, 23.12.1 VR, and emulation included. And if you want the fluid motion frames, just use those drivers, the beta version, which is the 23.13.05.1, something like that. And just to finalize, in case you're using an even older car than the Polaris and Vega ones, well, uh, I'd simply advise you to use the Radian ID drivers, once again, the modded drivers from the former Amer Nime team, because, well, they bring you everything new, everything the, the newer drivers do to your older generation card, not in terms of features, but at least in terms of driver optimizations. You can have those on your previous generation. Imagine that you have, let's say, a, an, R, an R9 Fury or an R9 390, something like that, R7 280, R9 doesn't really matter. If you have one of those older cards, you are most likely going to have something like the official drivers being like 21 point something point something, really old drivers. And with the Amer Nime modded drivers, you can get recent drivers that work much better with your card and will just extract the last bit of performance that you can get from them. So in case you have really old generation cards, get the Radeon ID drivers. It's the best that you can do. And well, guys, that's all for today's video. I uh, hope you really enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any doubts, as always, leave your comment in the comment section uh, and I'll answer as fast as I can. And I guess I... Maybe I'm making a video tomorrow, I guess. But if I don't, well, Merry Christmas to you all. Uh, hope you enjoy your holidays. If you don't celebrate Christmas, doesn't really matter. Just enjoy your holidays. And thank you very much for watching the video. And once again, leave your comment in the comment section with your experiencing, with your experience, letting me and us, the community, know what you think about the... Um, the drivers, which card you have and which driver performs the best for your card. Leave it on the comment section and we can all actually share our experiences, which is really the point of these videos. Thank you very much once again and see you in the next video, guys. Cheers.